Okay, so now let's just have a look at a few examples, which is probably a little bit more difficult. Okay, so obviously, all we need to do is really make use of the formula. So uh, in this question, it asks us to calculate n if, and then they give us this thing. Oh, that should be p. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, and we should calculate n. n is therefore an unknown. So let's just quickly have a look at more or less what is here on the left-hand side. Well, if p is equal to 1, we have 2 times 1 minus 3, which gives us negative 1. Okay, then if p is 2, it's 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1, so plus 1. Okay, and then uh, p is 3, so 2 plus th uh, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3 is 3. Okay, and this seems to be going on, and they're saying that if we add up all of the terms on this side, we get 80. Okay, we don't know where we're stopping, because that's actually the question, is what is the value of n? How many terms are there? So, we're looking for n. Let's just confirm now whether this is indeed a, an arithmetic sequence. Okay, all we need is three terms, and if I see uh, this minus minus 1 gives me 2, 3 minus 1 gives me 2, and there we go, we have a constant difference. In this, these two, that being my first term, negative 1, and my constant difference is equal to 2. And then we also see that this is the sum of the first n terms. So this is Sn. Okay. And with all these things considered, I can now go and substitute everything that I know into my formula. So here's my formula. Very important. Once you recognize the arithmetic series, then you should know that this is the formula. Best to know it even off by heart. Okay, and let's substitute in what we do know. Well, we do know the sum of the first n terms. That's equal to 80. We don't know n, but we do know a. a is equal to negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Plus, we also do know d. d is equal to 2. So this is 2n minus 1, which I don't know. Okay, multiplying it all in, you're going to see that we have an n here and an n there. So when I multiply this, it's going to be n squared, uh, which means I eventually are going to have to take everything to the one side and solve a quadratic equation, which just means I don't want it equal to 80. I want it equal to 0. So I'm just going to put that so long. So I'm going to subtract 80 on both sides. Subtract 80 on both sides. So what do we get on this side? Let's multiply n. Obviously, 2 times this half cancels, so it's just negative n. Okay, and then the same thing happens here. That 2 and that 2 will cancel to just give me plus n, n minus 1, minus 80. Cool. And now when I do everything equal to 0, I get n squared. This will be negative n, negative 2n, negative 80 is equal to 0. This one goes into two brackets very easily, but you could use your formula if you if you struggle finding the brackets in in what can I multiply to give me 80 and when I subtract it I get negative 2 well that's easily 10 and 8 8 minus 10 is negative 2 so it's positive 8 and negative 10 that gives me the negative 2 which means that n is now either equal to negative 8 or n is equal to 10. So either I have negative 8 terms, nah, okay, that's impossible. This is nonsense. It makes no sense, okay. We can't have negative terms. It's not applicable. Even though it's a good answer, it's not good for this specific scenario because we can't have negative terms. So um, how many terms must I add up to get to 80? Well, 10 terms.